What is up everybody? This video is going to be about uh, a little bit of a change of plans. I was going to order bearings like I said in the last video. I was going to go get the Honda bearings. But come to find out, a lot of these bearings are out of stock or discontinued or difficult to find. Um, so then I was also doing some more research and typically people uh, with boosted cars, they want to run looser clearances than the factory clearances. So typically you're looking at from factory like, uh, I forget what the service limit is like 0.9 to like, um, not the service limit, but the correct range is 0.9 to like uh, 1.5 thousandths. And the service limit is like 2.4 thousandths. So once you have 2.4 thousandths of clearance or 2.4 thousandths of an oil film, uh, where the surface is riding in between the bearing and the actual crankshaft, that is when you're supposed to change the bearings. Um, so I don't really know what kind of clearance I have. And you know, rather than buy these bearings and have to clearance them and make sure that they're going to work and have issues with that and you know, spend a bunch of money on that, uh, I've, I'm thinking these bearings don't look too bad, so maybe I'll just see what these look like with the plastic gauge. And if they look okay and they're looser than factory, that can be okay, you know? And they're not really too worn, so I don't feel too bad about running the car with the bearings, and it did run pretty well, so let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So, yeah, these bearings don't look all that bad. These are the bearings that were in the car from the factory, and they look pretty good, minus this one has a little bit of copper. Um, it's worn through the first layer, so I'm gonna throw the plastic gauge right there. But I've just gone through and I cleaned everything. I took all the bearings out, cleaned the surface of the block, cleaned the bearing on both sides, and I put it back together. I did the same thing on the cradle, which is that guy over there. On the underside of there, I took all the bearings off and made sure not to mix any of them up. It's important that they stay in the correct spot. The ones I did have out, at, you know, when I had multiple out at a time, I labeled them all, and I know exactly where they go. Um, as far as the pistons, what I'm actually doing right now is cleaning the pistons. So I cleaned, uh, you know, the rod and the bearing that's inside of there and all the surfaces around it. And I had soaked these in degreaser, which you should be careful about because some degreasers, uh, like the one that I used, are too aggressive. And I actually etched the piston kind of like this gray area is where the soaking line was and this area was not soaked. So, yeah, hopefully I caught it in time. It was only like an hour, so hopefully it's okay. Uh, I don't think I took off any material or anything like that, so it should be fine. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean out all these holes in here now. So I know I was showing you guys before, I'll see if I can get in the light. You can see the holes there. Uh, this is one that I've already done and cleaned out, I think. Uh, maybe the other side will be a little bit less cleaned out. Yeah, I think so. So what I've actually been doing is uh, taking a drill bit, uh, just clamped with some vice grips, and sticking it through those oil holes there and just sort of running it through and trying to make them large again and you can see all the areas in there where the holes are and those should be nice big open holes and you can see that one all the way on that side doesn't look like it's open at all um, so I'll go ahead and hit that with a drill bit and then you know it'll open up and then we can have oil flowing in here again which will be great we can uh, not burn as much oil hopefully So it's tough for me to get you guys a good look at this here, but um, hopefully you can see the holes in the piston there. Um, what I'm doing is just taking this drill bit with these vice grips, and I'm just going through each and every one of these little holes here. And you can see some of that brown stuff comes out. It's all carbon buildup in there and, you know, varnished oil and things like that. So. Just taking that out, trying my best not to damage the actual ringland itself or, you know, drill these holes out big or anything like that. I mean, I can't imagine drilling them out a little bigger it would be a big deal, but, you know, don't really need to. Just trying to clean them out and make them the size that uh, they were intended to be. So, these I already kind of did on this side. Uh, these are a little more clogged here, so this one's going to take me a little while to drill through. But 
But yeah, I don't want to do this with a drill just because, you know, well, I trust myself with a drill. This is, uh, you know, one slip could, uh, could, you know, be pretty catastrophic if I damaged one of the ringlands. So I think I'm better off just doing it by hand here. Can't really do too much damage. Yeah, this one is very clogged. There we go. Finally broke through on that one. All kinds of crud. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through and do Probably just a couple of pistons, and I'm gonna probably do the the most worn out ones, and then I'm gonna go ahead and plastic gauge everything and see what the clearances end up being. So you can see after going through all these with a drill bit, they look much bigger. Um, and I didn't drill them out; I just took the carbon out, and you can see on the inside um, those holes are actually visible now. So those were pretty clogged. I'm going to go through and wire brush. Uh, actually, I'll probably use like a plastic brush and just try to scrub inside of that ring there to free all that up, get all that gunk out of there. And maybe on the inside too, just to clean it all up. And uh, yeah, then I will do the plastic gauge. So I just spent probably 20 minutes or a half hour uh, using this oil control ring that I used a pair of pliers to cut. And I just stuck it in the groove like this and just scraped like crazy until I got all the carbon out of both compression rings and out of the oil control ring area and top and bottom all the way around. Everything's clean now. Um, basically a new piston other than, you know, all that crap. But I'll show you guys comparison. Uh, here's one that I haven't touched yet. You can see it's all black in there. Um, there's a few areas that are semi-clean in the oil control ring area, but both compression ring uh, grooves are all black. Uh, so, yeah, i got to do all these pistons. It's going to take me a while, but it is what it is. It'll be clean, and uh, yeah, our rings are going to function properly, move around like they should, and hopefully they will seal well. We won't have any oil burning. That is the hope. But at this point, if it burns oil, I don't care, I'm just going to drive it, <laughs> but I'm really praying it does not, so yeah, I think now that I have this uh, one, you know, piston and rod combo all set, I'm going to, uh, you know, throw some plastic gauge down and throw the crank in and torque everything down and go ahead and check my clearances, so yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. So I have all my plastic gauge laid out on my upper bearings here. You can see this little little green thing here. And this stuff is going to squeeze down. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> this stuff's gonna squeeze down and it'll squish out and it'll flatten itself out. And then we are going to measure how flat it is exactly, and that'll tell us what our uh, oil film thickness is gonna be or what our bearing clearances are between the bearings and the crankshaft. So right now we're going to lower this crankshaft down onto the motor and I got my assistant here. It's gonna help us out. But yeah, you just wanna go down nice and slow and uh, you are not... Yep, yeah, there you go. And not uh, knock any of our plastic gauge out, hopefully. Yep. So hopefully we're good there. Now I'm going to probably throw some on top of the crank as well on the uh, main journals just because I want to see both sides just to see the different size bearings and how they were as well as uh, maybe see some out of round if we do have any. And I'll probably do one rod as well, whichever one's easy to get to. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and lay out some more plastic gauge and uh, we'll check back when I start uh, putting the cradle on and torquing everything down. 
So I laid down another little strip of plastic gauge on top of each bearing, and then I went ahead and threw our uh, you know lower uh, bearings on or in the cradle, and I was able to actually tap it down with a rubber mallet just to get everything to seat. I started all the bolts, and I'm going to run them down with an electric impact just until we get to you know the bottom, the bottoming out point, and then I'll start to torque them. Uh, I got to verify the torque spec. I believe it's it's two steps. First one's 22 foot pounds, but I'm going to look it up and I'll get back to you. first, you know, starting from the inside and diagonal working my way out from there. And uh, yeah, then I brought it up to 50, uh, 54, I think. And then I brought uh, the rod cap nuts. I did one rod over here, I plastic gauge it on one side. Um, it was like one of the more worn out looking ones. And uh, yeah, so now that everything is all torqued down, I'm ready to take it all back apart. So I'm going to go ahead and Tear this thing back apart and we're going to check what kind of clearances that we have in here. So I have really good news honestly. Um, so yeah, I plastic gauged the whole thing and I torqued everything down to spec like I said and then I removed it and I was just checking over all of our clearances and everything looks awesome. And honestly, I don't know why I was about to put bearings in this motor. It doesn't need them and that's just Wicked impressive to me for a car with 190,000 miles. Got to hand it to Honda because this thing doesn't even need bearings. It's it's still within spec. Um, you know, it's within well within the service limit. The service limit, the max tolerance you can be is about 2.4 thousandths. And even at that, I might just run it just because with a turbo car or something that you want to rev higher, uh, you want to have a little bit looser tolerances, and you can run a little thicker oil to get your air, uh, oil pressure up and you'll be okay. But honestly, we are, for the most part, we are from 1.5 to 2 thousandths, um, just about everywhere. So we're in like 1.75 thousandths range, which is on the upper end of like the tolerances as far as serviceable limit, but we are, I say still within the service limit, and I don't think that we should put bearings in it just because a, the money, and like I'm not building this motor up like crazy, like I just want to make a little bit of boost and just have fun. Maybe I'll build another motor on the side, a high performance 400 horsepower thing or whatever to drop in this thing later, but as for right now, just want to get it running. I hate having the car down and uh, you know, I want to make some boost. So I'm going to run the factory bearings, OEM bearings at 190K. Um, I've heard of people running them at, you know, even further. Uh, mileages, so I'm not at all worried. I think we're gonna be just fine. So let me show you guys some of these. Uh, let me show you some of these tolerances that I'm talking about here. All right, so it might be tough for you to see, but hopefully you can see this. Um, I'm gonna hold the gauge up to it right here, and the largest line is 1,000, right? 1,000. And we're a little smaller than that, so if you hold this one right here, that is the 1.5 thousandths. We're just about at 1.5 thousandths on this guy. And, you know, if you go over to this one, it's about the same, and the rest of them. Uh, if I take you over here and show you uh, this guy here, this is the cradle with the lower bearings. Plastic gauge is hard to see, but how about this one right here? This is somewhere, it's going to be somewhere around... 1.5 thousandths. Um, so that is pretty good, to be honest. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that uh, clearance. I mean, 1.5 is even a little tight for uh, you know a turbo car. But I'm not going to be making big power, so I think we should be just fine with that clearance. Um, I also did do one of the rods, like I was saying. And if you take a look at this rod cap here, um, 
you can probably see the line in there. And when I throw the plastic gauge onto that, let's see. Yeah, this guy plastic gauge is in around 1.5 as well. Um, so, yeah, looks like the rods are okay as well. So, all in all, I think we are good to go with this motor. So, yeah, I think I'm going to send it on these factory bearings because I'm going to save money. And I already know the car runs great with these bearings. It has great oil pressure. You know, why mess up what I got going on? You know, I got a good thing going. Not going to change it. Those bearings and the crank have been together for a long time. Who am I to separate them? So, yeah, that's a bit of a change of plans, but I'm totally okay with it because it saves me some money. And, uh, you know, we'll see just how far we can get these bearings to go. So, with that being said, um, we are not going to order those bearings. And I'm just going to run these bearings and save a little money. Buy some more turbo parts with the save money. But, yeah, based on that, I'm waiting for piston rings to arrive. And once my piston rings arrive, uh, I should be able to assemble this motor, or at least the bottom end, and uh, really get going on it. I'm still waiting on buying some base coat for this um, engine bay here, which is going to look really sweet. It even looks good primer, I think, so I think it's going to look really awesome. I still want to go with like a gold, so I'm going to get like a gold metallic base coat, and then I'm going to clear coat it with a 2K clear coat. So it should be pretty nice. And I'm going to paint the block, so i got a lot of work to do. But now that I know um, I'm good to go, I just got to let the rings come in, which should come in like Monday, and I can start gapping the rings and throwing the bottom end of this thing together. And then my only concern is making sure that the head is good. So I may inspect the valve stem seals and valve guides just to make sure they're not excessively worn. If they're not excessively worn, I'll slap the head on, and we're going to see if it runs good. And if it still burns oil, then uh, I'm going to look into a different head, I think and then I'll just slap a new head on the whole thing. So, yeah, but I'm gonna try to do this super budget, super cheap, just because that's this is supposed to be a budget race car, so I don't wanna spend too much money on this stupid thing, but I do want it to run good, so we're gonna try to do as little as possible to get that to happen. So, yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I do hope that you enjoy these videos. Uh, I'm gonna continue to make more, whether you like them or not, but, I do appreciate it if you're watching and liking and you know subscribing. It definitely uh, helps me out. I like to make it big someday, but uh, you know it takes a while and slow going process. But I'm willing to put in the work and I enjoy doing these sorts of things and I want to share it with people. So hopefully you enjoy and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully in the next video we will uh, either be painting something or you know maybe doing some assembly. So yeah, stay tuned everybody. Thanks for watching.